All right, we invite you all to enter into the darkness with us. Tonight we are gathering in this challenging time to nurture solstice sweetness. If you have a candle nearby, you'll wanna gather it now. And it would help to have three small stones handy or any three little objects that would fit in the palm of your hand. And if there's more than one of you in the window, you would each probably like to have your own set of stones or objects. And of course, as always, your imagination will be sufficient to get you through the ritual. So don't worry if you don't have those things handy. So together, let us enter into the gentle darkness. You are welcome to sing along with our choir, Harmonia, as they call the, to the elements, the earth, the air, the fire, the water, return, 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 return. Welcome to Westwood Unitarian Online for our 34th Winter Solstice Celebration. We begin in our services at Westwood with a call to land liberation, a Miskwachi Waskahikin, meaning Beaver Hills House, is the Cree name for Edmonton. And Westwood is situated on Treaty 6 territory and the traditional meeting ground and home of many indigenous peoples, including Cree, Soto, Blackfoot, Métis, Nakota Sioux, and many others. As treaty people, we are all partners in a relationship and to come to land liberation and to understand reconciliation, each of us needs to take action and make effort on the behalf of understanding what these relationships and what the treaties mean to all of us. Wherever you are located, you are in someone's traditional territory. So we invite you, if you know the answer to that, to type into the chat what your traditional territory is. One of the parts of our commitment to reconciliation and healing is to try to build relationships with local organizations and local people. And over the years, We've had a number of interactions with Ben Terror Traditional Healing Society. And so as an act of reconciliation, our offering this evening, when it comes up later in the service, will be 100% dedicated to Ben Terror. For me, land liberation means taking the time to try to build relationships, to move slowly and work with people, to get to know one another, and work on a relational level. And you will see in our service this evening that while many people have poured their hearts and souls and minds and creative wisdom into this service, our featured speaker is a real treasure and gift to us. And that is Elder Sharon Jinkerson Brass will be speaking to us three times during the service. And that's built on the relationship that Elder Sharon and Alara have grown together. This is really a huge benefit that we are all um, receiving as a gift this evening. You'll see the names of many people on your screen, our musicians, our speakers, our artists and animators, and the people who did video and tech support. And especially a thank you to our Solstice organizing team who has been meeting for many months, preparing to do something special for you this evening. We focus our attention and our energies to call upon the four directions, asking their help to infuse our gathering with the energies and wisdom of life and nature and the unseen. 
Please turn your attention toward the east. We call upon the spirits of the east. One. Spirits of the east. Spirits of air and new beginnings. You are home to the dawn. The fragile morning winter light where dreams are inspired. May your gentle breeze drift through this gathering and awaken us so each of us might see the possibilities inherent in this solstice eve. Blessed be. Please turn toward the south. We call upon the spirits of the south. Spirits of the south, spirits of fire, heat and passion, warmth and love. We take comfort in your bright beauty while we long for the return of the celestial light. May you burn deep and strong among us this evening as we celebrate the ever-turning wheel of life. Blessed be. Please turn toward the West. We call upon the spirits of the West. Spirits of the West, spirits of water, frozen river, and flakes of snow, you are the source of life's elixir, essential dew that nourishes all beings. May the flow of life be both strong and gentle within each person gathered here. And may this always be a safe harbor. Blessed be. Please turn toward the north. We call upon the spirits of the north. Spirit of the north, spirit of the earth, mother of mountains, of trees, of midnight, you are home to the ancestors, home to the generations who will follow, home to so many of us who gather tonight. We bid you welcome and unite with you to call back the sun from the womb of night. Blessed be. Please turn toward the center. Spirits above and spirits below, that meet in the middle for our change and transformation. Join us, if you will. Rise up, O My people say that the stars are the campfires of our ancestors. We believe that when a person goes to the spirit world, they make a four day journey and they light a fire in the sky. And we say that our ancestors shine down on us. They illuminate our night walk and they illuminate our dreams and in the winter time when we make sacred fires the old ones where i come from they say if you look around on the prairies you can see on a cold winter night in the old days everybody's fire and my 
uncle used to say, if you look beyond that, it looks as if we're sitting with the stars. And I happened to be sitting with my uncle when we were, he said this, and for just a moment, I could see several fires at a distance and it felt like we'd climbed into the sky and we were sitting there with the ancestors, but for a moment. So I'm going to light a sacred fire here in the form of a little candle, just to commemorate that beautiful tradition and the sacredness of fire. And I just invite everyone who's here in our sacred circle today to just take a moment and feel the energy from your first Holy Mother, the Earth. And take a moment to perceive the sky above you, where the sun, where Grandmother Moon resides, and where the campfires of our ancestors reside. And take a moment to feel the beating of your heart. That's the first sound that you ever heard when you came in to this world. Gichi Manitou, creator of all life. We give thanks, great spirit, for the beauty and gift of this day. And we give thanks for the beauty and gift of our ancestors whose rituals, dances, songs, prayers, love, and light illuminate us even to this day. And we give thanks, Great Spirit, for all, all of the abundance that we have here on earth. We give thanks for the sacred waters, for the sacred air, for the sacred ground, for the sacred fire. We give thanks, Great Spirit, for all the creatures that are here, for those that fly in the sky, those that crawl along the earth and swim in the waters. And we give thanks, Great Spirit, for the two-leggeds and the four-leggeds. And we give thanks, Great Spirit, for the beauty of all the cultures and all the prayers in the world at this time. And we give thanks, Great Spirit, for the celestial, heavenly insights of bees and their beautiful healing medicines of honey. We give thanks for their beautiful gift of pollination. And we give thanks, Great Spirit, for their beautiful dances that have inspired us. And we give thanks, Great Spirit, for all the beautiful medicines that we have on the earth that help us to heal. We give thanks for the gift of our brotherhoods and sisterhoods and otherhoods. And we ask in a good and humble way that you help us to see in the dark, help us to let the soft, gentle light of Grandmother Moon enter our souls and beings and the soft little sparks of light of our ancestors and the beautiful holy warmth of the sun. We ask at this time that you bless the Bear Nation, bless the gift of questing and the gift of the spirit world. And we ask with deep reverence and humility that the blessings from the spirit world flow through our bodies like water does through the rivers. And we ask at this time for the gift of unity, the gift of compassion, the gift of connection, the gift of love. 
And we ask in a good and humble way that each person in this circle be held today, that all of their family and loved ones be held, that their communities and everybody on Turtle Island and in the world be held at this time. We ask in a good and humble way for blessings on those who are lost, great spirit, those who are homeless and hungry, those with illnesses, and those people who don't know who they are. And we ask in a good and humble way that their journeys be blessed with love and light. And we ask in a good and humble way that we come together during this solstice time, that we embrace the medicines of transformation and we embrace that holy gift of honey and that holy gift of light. All my relations, hope. We offer our most humble gratitude to Elder Sharon Jinkerson Brass for joining us in spirit and celebration this evening. Her wisdom has inspired many parts of this service, and you can look forward to hearing from her again in a few minutes. We welcome you to our sacred circle where we hold and celebrate a blend of cultures. May the blessings of beauty and compassion, connection and love gently seep into all the places within us and between us, anywhere where they might meet an essential need. Here at Westwood, we celebrate winter solstice following Celtic tradition. It's important to us as a winter city to have ways of making meaning and being together in the dark times of the year. We lift up the beauty of the evergreens and their faithfulness as they last all winter. We light fires to remember the sun and bring warmth and heat to our gatherings. We celebrate with feasts and hot cider, yule logs, plenty of food, and we light candles for the warm golden glow they bring to our homes. We decorate with baubles and bells and bows and sparkles to add festive cheer to our spaces. And we bring in the evergreen for the beautiful fragrance and to decorate our mantles. And if that's not enough, we add sparkle and light. You can't have too much sparkle and light. The wreath is an essential element of our winter solstice celebration. It is reminiscent of the wheel of the year. We are in Yule now, and the wheel reminds us that with its turning, the sun will return, and her golden glow will warm and nourish us once again. We support one another with all of these traditions. And we recognize that around the world and across many cultures, there are so many ways to mark the turning wheel of the year. We're excited to open our hearts and minds and learn more. One of the most interesting things about solstice in December is that it's a holy time of quiet on the earth. And we believe that Mother Earth sleeps. And the creature that we emulate in the spring is the bear. And the bear nation we say lives in the west. And the winter time is the west direction. And if you look on our medicine wheels, you'll see black. And that depicts this particular season where the Bear Nation is the keeper of the West direction. 
and we revere this quiet creature because they turn inward and they sleep deeply through the winter months to emerge in the spring with a vision and with new life, their little cubs in the spring. And so in this time of solstice, turning is an opportunity to turn inward and have this deep reflection and communion with the spirit world. Because we believe where the sun sets in the West is where the spirit world resides. So in this time of quiet in the earth when it's sleeping, we are also closest to the spirit world, <clears throat> to our ancestors. <clears throat> and so during this time, we light our fires to stay warm. And during this time upon reflection is when we share stories sacred stories about the meaning of life. So we have the fires that give us warmth and light, and we have the stories that bring warmth and light to our hearts. So during the winter time was when we stayed indoors, we prayed, we made art, it was reflecting deeply. It is custom in Unitarian Universalist congregations to mark the joys and concerns, celebrations and transitions of our lives. We'll do that this evening with the representation of the elements that we called into our circle. The element of earth is solid and substantial and will represent everything that is supportive in your life. Air is the direction of new beginnings all the things that you have started this year, all the dreams you're putting into place. Fire is excitement and warmth and passion. It could also be celebration and love. Water ebbs and flows and changes and we'll use it to represent the concerns that we carry. Spirit is the force that animates all life. And for now, we'll represent whatever it is that nourishes you. We invite you, while the music plays, to type your joys and sorrows, transitions and celebrations into the chat.
This ritual can be done anytime, anywhere. It refers to three small stones and a mat to place them on, so gather those now. Or you can use any three small objects and any surface. Or follow the steps symbolically using your imagination. Our hope is that this practice will become second nature so you can use it whenever it would be helpful. We'll speak about past, present, and future worries, but you know you best. Feel free to focus on whatever thought presents itself, whatever the category. And if the same worry comes up three times, just keep laying it down over and over until you are done. Lay your worries down. We carry a lot. We hold dreams and memories and responsibilities, sometimes inspiration, sometimes suffering. Any of these may nourish or strengthen us, and any of these might weigh us down, sometimes both at once. It's time to lay your worries down, not forever, not perfectly, just enough to lighten the load, just enough to breathe a few peaceful breaths, just enough for a little relief or to help you ease into sleep. You're not trying to erase your worries. Just give yourself a moment of awareness or presence or rest. Please settle in for the next few minutes, making yourself as comfortable as possible letting the rest of the world slip away. Place three small stones in the palm of your hand. Each one will represent a worry that you carry. Stay with it. Even if you have no stones handy, your imagination is enough. Hold these stones. Feel their weight. Not too heavy. Not more than you can bear just enough to hold your attention, your awareness. So many of our worries are future related, worries about what we need to do, what will happen in the days or months to come, whatever challenges or fears or obligations loom ahead. It could be as ordinary as a deadline or an appointment, or it could be heavier, like a diagnosis, or a conflict, or a loss. What is one thing based in the future that weighs on you now? Name your worry aloud, or in the safety of your mind. Now repeat after me. I choose this stone to represent this worry. I know that worry will not change it. I choose to take a moment of rest. I lay this worry down. Now lay your stone on the mat and take three gentle breaths. Notice that the weight you are holding is a little lighter. You can pick up your concern whenever you need it. For now, it is safe on the map. We carry memories of the past, mistakes we have made, choices we regret. Sometimes even our joyful memories of loved ones no longer with us or happy times will weigh us down. Select the second stone and repeat the ritual. What is one thing based in the past that weighs on you now? Name your worry aloud or in the safety of your mind. Now repeat. I choose this stone to represent this worry. 
I know that worrying will not change it. I choose to take a moment of rest. I lay this worry down. Now lay your stone on the mat and take three gentle breaths. Notice the weight you hold is lighter again and you are a little freer to continue on. Now reflecting on the present moment, what is vying for your attention, distracting you, interrupting your peace or comfort or concentration, or rest. Repeat the ritual one final time with your third stone representing this worry. What is one thing based in the present that weighs on you now? Name your worry aloud or in the safety of your mind. Now repeat, I choose this stone to represent this worry. I know that worrying will not change it. I choose to take a moment of rest. I lay this worry down. Now lay your stone on the mat and take three gentle breaths. Now your hand is empty. Your worries lay upon the mat. Take another gentle breath, breathing in peace. May this practice provide respite from all that you carry. And with your next exhale, breathe out love May you feel lighter for a time. Breathe in, filling the open space with peace. Breathe out, wrapping yourself in love. Breathe in peace. Breathe out love. Blessed be. Now that you're all relaxed, you might be thinking, where are all the bees? They promised us bees. All the posters had bees. And sure enough, the bees will be coming right up in our feature solstice story. Our next song blends our two essential messages this evening, both to lay our burdens down and to celebrate the sweetness of being together and dream of brighter days. So here are the lyrics and they're on the screen as well. Lay your burdens down, taste the sweetness of being together, the cycle circles around. As bees dream, let us dream of brighter days. Darkness is for dreaming of wiser ways. Let us dream of brighter days.
For 27 years, Bentero Traditional Healing Society has been dedicated to guidance, support, and healing, serving Indigenous children, youth, and families in Edmonton and area since 1994. Their founders believed strongly that keeping culture at the center was crucial, and this important work was best done in partnership. As an organization, they have developed strong partnerships with many and are proud to see that culture continues to play a central role in their practice. They also support many partners in elevating their capacity to serve the Indigenous community in a culturally relative, authentic, and sincere way. When we take an offering at our winter solstice celebration in person, it's easy to pass a basket and gather um, from the generosity of the people present. And it's harder when we're online. It's kind of simple to just let the moment pass by and stick with the service and not make a contribution. But we'd like to encourage you to push past that moment and to just either make a contribution right now or to make a note of our address, our web address, www.westwoodunitarian.ca. And if you go to Westwood Unitarian, right at the top, you can click on donate and all the ways to contribute are there. We will gather the offering this evening. So we'd love for you to mark your contributions solstice. So we know that it was a solstice offering, but anything coming in in the next couple of days, we'll recognize as a solstice offering. You can contribute by Interact e-transfer, uh, snail mail with a check or a money order. You can use credit card or PayPal through Canada Helps. And all of those methods are linked through our Westwood Unitarian website. Now, we can give a um, charitable tax receipt to any donation of $20 or more. And unfortunately, we can't give a U.S. tax receipt. So only Canadian tax receipts are available in this, in this event. Now... You have the opportunity. Do you remember the beautiful song that played with the fire while we were typing our joys and concerns into the chat? Now you have the opportunity to learn the words to the song and to sing along with the choir. So the song is written by Ali Halpert and with her blessing, we're using it this evening. And it was our beloved music director, Rebecca Patterson, who created the instrumental version for us. And now she has led our choir in the choral version. So here are the words to the song, but you'll catch on really quickly. Loosen, loosen, baby. You don't have to carry the weight of the world in your muscles and bones. Let go, let go, let go. Holy breath and holy name, will you ease? Will you ease this pain? Loosen, loosen.
Now we have come to the feature element of our evening, our solstice story, nurturing solstice sweetness. We recognize that it is a challenging time. And of course, if you've been listening to the news the last couple of days, it just seems to get more and more challenging. And that everybody is feeling tired and weighed down and maybe our calibration is all a little off. And so we offer to you this story with the wisdom of bees in the hope that it helps us all to reset on our path. So here it is, Nourishing Solstice Sweetness. We hope you enjoy it as much as we do and take the message to heart. Nourishing Solstice Sweetness, a solstice story by Reverend Ann Barker, with wisdom from Ilara Stefaniak Gadet and Elder Sharon Jinkerson Brass. Animation by Ilara Stefaniak Gadet. Welcome to our winter solstice story, Nourishing Solstice Sweetness, a lesson from the honeybees about feeding what is good and useful and helping one another to find our way. Grandmother Moon is high up in the sky, along with the stars. Some people say that the stars are the campfires of the ancestors. And here is the hive. It is winter, so the bees are sleeping. The bees are going to help tell our winter solstice story. Let's go gently and meet our new friend. See the sweet honeybees snug in their bee beds under their cozy bee blankets? It would be a shame to wake them. Did you know that bees dream? They really do. Before they went to sleep, these bees said that they wanted to help us tonight with our winter solstice story. So we're going to peek into their dreams. Good evening, bees. It's story time. We know that in the warm season, bees are experts at navigation, and they are also experts at teamwork. When one bee finds a good source of nectar, nectar is the precious substance they collect from flowers to make honey, they share the location with the other bees so the others can help with the gathering. Bees use two really important tools to help them map their route from the hive to the flowers. Two compasses. Their first compass that helps them find their way and give directions to their friends is a celestial compass. That means they use the sun to measure distance and location by. Just like people have a compass that we line up with the north to help us find our way, the bees use the celestial compass to line up with the sun. Bees share the work of gathering nectar. So when one bee finds a new supply, it returns to the hive and shares that information with the others. To share directions with their friends, they do something really special. The bees do a waggle dance. The direction of the dance tells the other bees which direction to fly when they go outside of the hive. And the length of the dance tells them how far they need to travel. To use a celestial compass, it's important to be able to see the sun. But when it gets cloudy and the bees can't see the sun anymore, they use their second compass. And that second compass is their memory. They look around the landscape, looking where the trees and rocks and mountains and streams are, and they remember where the sun should be, and they use that memory to navigate their way back to the nectar. Once they have reoriented, using their memories of the sun's location, they share directions using the waggle dance again. Then the bees find their way to the flowers, and they bring the nectar back to the hive, storing it in the honeycombs, 
nourishing the sweetness needed to get them through the long, dark winter. No problem. Only sometimes there is a problem. The backup memory, that second compass, depends on the landscape being familiar. So if the sun is out, no problem. And if the sun is hidden, but the landscape is familiar, no problem. But if you take a hive and move it to a different place where the scenery is not familiar, and the sun is hidden behind the clouds, then the bees become disoriented. They feel confused. They aren't sure anymore. Their navigation systems feel broken. They need either the sun or the familiar landscape to find their way. When bees get disoriented, they have a very difficult time giving directions to their friends. Their waggle dance, instead of pointing in the direction of the nectar, starts to go in a circle. They end up waggling in a circle because they aren't sure which direction to go anymore. And they stay pretty much in one spot because they aren't sure how far to go either to get to the nectar. Their waggle dance is confused because they are confused. People have a lot in common with bees when you think about it. We need the sun for warmth and light and energy. And that helps us to be happy and hopeful and active in the world. When it's dark out, we use our memories like the bees do to remember the light and the warmth of the sun. And we rely on the familiar things around us, landmarks or touchstones, to wake up those memories, to bring us comfort and reassurance even when the sun is hidden behind the clouds or during the long, dark nights. Those familiar things can be nature, like the mountains and trees and rocks and streams, just like the bees use. But it could also be people. We feel better when we're with our loved ones, our friends or family, the people who feel like home. And sometimes it's the things we do like making music, or having lunch at our favorite cafe, or celebrating a holiday tradition that helps us feel connected and settled, and we remember which way we meant to go. And, like the bees, if we can't see the sun, and we get separated from the important people and places and practices in our lives, then we tend to struggle and get confused as well. We can feel disoriented, like we're going in circles, not really getting anywhere, unsure where exactly we should be going. In the dark season of winter and during difficult times, it's more important than ever to find ways to connect with our memories and our touchstones to help rekindle the flame within us. So we hang sparkly decorations and we light candles to remind and reassure ourselves to help us remember that the sun is still there even when it seems to be hidden. Or we build a bonfire underneath the moonlight and we gather around it with our friends celebrating the warmth and connection that comes from being together. In the very best of circumstances when we remember what is good and joyful and important and bright even we might do a waggle dance. At least the people version of a waggle dance whatever that may be. Just like our honeybee friends, we rely on the sun when the sun is shining 
and we count on our memory and our touchstones when the darkness comes. We nourish one another with the sweetness of gathering, sharing memories and traditions and celebrations, sharing light in whatever forms we find it. To help us get through the long cold winter and to remind one another that the sun always returns. Good night, moon. Good night, trees. Good night, hive with all your bees. Good night, ancestors. Good night, snow. Good night, all the love we grow. When we are able to gather together in person, we offer gifts to all of the participants who come, a bit of evergreen, a candle, and a message or a little treasure of some kind or another. Because we aren't in the same physical space, that doesn't stop us from wanting to share gifts. So I wanna let you know that between now and the new year, we will post the meditation of Lay Your Burdens Down so you can listen to Ed's soothing voice anytime you would like a little support and relief. We'll put it on the Westwood website. And there will also be a simple text version in case you'd like to carry it with you and help to build that into a regular practice to just lay those burdens down during these challenging times. Now, we are at the moment of the ritual when even though we have hope and faith, we still call to the universe and encourage the sun to return. So if you have a candle nearby, it's time to fire it up and get ready so we can call the sun together. We light these candles in the spirit of faith and hope the spirit of joy at being together. And we call upon you, the glorious sun, to know that we value you and we ask you to begin your ascent back up into the sky where you can warm and nurture life on our planet that we may grow and glow in your reflection. Now, Alara, will you pull that back to the start? Awesome. Here we go. There's your candle if you don't have one. And I want you to say it with me. The sun always returns. Keep saying it till we get evidence. The sun always returns. The sun always returns. We know it, but we want to see it. The sun always returns. The sun always returns. Is, there it comes, it's coming, come on. Oh, the bees know the sun always returns. We're almost there, candles up. There it is, the sun has returned. And like Heather was telling us before we began, 
just seconds or minutes each day, it will start to rise up in the sky, get higher and higher, and our days will become longer. And there's our sign that the sun always returns. Into the vast plain of dark, empty, my spirit explodes. Motion, movement, white light, spin, spiral, turning round. A translucent sphere emerges, delicate, easily injured. Green grass, fresh, Sweet softness covers her ground with protective beauty, where white strawberry blossoms bloom and gentle winds dance the grass, where knock kneed baby deer take their first step. In this place where the river flows with emancipating clear, holy water and red sparking fire burns warm and a gentle eagle feather wind lift the sparks skyward. In this place where my younger self rests and my old one comes for protection, here is where I rise. Please turn your energy and attention towards the North. Spirit of the North, guardians of the earth, thank you for witnessing our celebration tonight. Stay if you will, go if you must, hail and farewell, blessed be. And to the West. Spirits of the West, guardians of water, Thank you for witnessing our celebration tonight. Stay if you will, go if you must, hail and farewell, blessed be. And to the South. Spirits of the South, guardians of the fire, thank you for witnessing our celebration tonight. Stay if you will, go if you must, hail and farewell, blessed be. And to the East, from whence we began, Spirits of the East, guardians of the air, thank you for witnessing our celebration tonight. Stay if you will, go if you must, hail and farewell, blessed be. And we return to center once more. Spirits above and spirits below that meet in the middle for our change and transformation, thank you for witnessing our celebration tonight. Stay if you will, go if you must, hail and farewell, blessed be. See, even the directions had their navigation systems all off kilter and the story helped them put them back together again. I'm glad they made it by the end of the service. Now we have two songs that we close our solstice celebration with each year. The first one is May the Circle Be Open. We sing it through three times and the, you can choose whatever words you'd like to put in where it says universe. People traditionally sing goddess or spirit or universe or God, whatever speaks to you. May the circle be open yet unbroken. May the love of the universe be ever in your heart. Mary meet and Mary part and Mary meet again. We're going to sing it three times through.
We hold you in love and gratitude. We are so grateful you came and gathered with us this solstice evening to break the isolation and reach across the miles so that we could be together in one space and sing together, even if it's not a traditional fashion. Our closing traditional song is performed by Gordon Ritchie from our, he's a neighbor from the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. And he usually comes and sings it with us on his beautiful harp every year. And we are so grateful that he sent us this recording. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall softly on your feet. And then till we meet again. Until we meet again. Dear thoughts of you will remain. May the road rise to meet you, may the wind be always at your back, may the sun shine warm upon your face, the rains fall softly on your feet, and until we meet again, until we meet of you will remain in my heart and until we meet again until we meet again dear thoughts of Thank you, everybody. That brings us to the end of the service. You are welcome to stay and visit. An invitation will come out to a breakout room if you'd like to do that. If you want to visit with, um, with me, I'm going to be in this stay in the main space. So just choose later or not now, I think is your option on the breakout room. And if you've just come for the service and you're not staying, let us just say thank you for being here with us. I love all your kitties and your smiling faces and your singing hearts in your little windows. And I'm so grateful that you could be here with us tonight. Blessed be.